thought I could. I thought I could. But I'm sort of obsessed with it. Yeah? Yeah, I want to prove things. Still? Yeah, I, I haven't been doing this for a long time. I went, oh no, it's like surreal. You know yeah. what I mean? You, after a while, when you go on publicity tours, you, you do a lot of speaking. After a while, you become like robotic. You are a little tet 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 talking. Yeah. He goes, you want to carve a bunk? But apparently, the truth is a horrible thing to say on the internet, as you know. So um, they they said we can't work with it anymore. Time is over, and once you're exposed out there, and, you know <laughs> it's out there. I mean, you're gonna have people following you home, and guys like. In a surprising move that has set tongues wagging among Hollywood's movers and shakers, Sylvester Stallone, the iconic figure who taught us all to stand up for what's right in the boxing ring, has been rumored to have turned down a jaw-dropping $500 million movie offer from Disney. Do you kind of like make peace at a certain point? No, or? Uh, you know, you can't make peace. I mean, let's uh, be realistic here. I'll never have a voice like that again where I can just speak whatever I feel in my heart. This is what I made for you. This is part of you. my legacy that I... That's never gonna happen. Yeah. So I can't forgive that. His reason? He's had enough of what he perceives as excessive political correctness. Some view this as a missed opportunity, while others wonder if Stallone is avoiding yet another sequel. This time, one infused with what he sees as an overemphasis on modern social and political issues instead of classic storytelling. Now, the rumor is that this is why he allegedly wants to pair up with Kevin Sorbo, who claims to have been vilified by Hollywood. My agent manager called me in their office about 11 years ago, and they've never, they're both on complete opposite sides of Hollywood, so I thought it was kind of weird. I felt like it was going to intervention. Disney, renowned for its enchanting realms and fairy tale conclusions, has been accused of being on a mission to infuse a more woke perspective into its cinematic tapestry. From princesses championing equal pay to princes advocating for climate action, Disney is ensuring every character gets a dose of 21 saint century consciousness. For example, here's the new Snow White actress bashing the original movie. The cartoon came out in 1937, yeah. and very evidently so. <laughs> um, there is a big focus on her love story. Um, with a guy who literally stalks her. <laughs> Beyond Snow White, rumor has it that even the next Lion King sequel might even showcase Simba attending a seminar on sustainable grazing. Hakuna Matata, indeed. However, Sylvester Stallone seems to have missed the memo about Hollywood's shifting direction. When asked about his choice, he stated, I fought against Russians, trained fighters, and even climbed mountains in my movies. But this, this is where I draw the line. Ah, uh, the good old days when Stallone's biggest concern was a rival boxer, and not a script filled with contemporary societal commentary. Meanwhile, a prominent actress was overheard saying, If being woke means getting $500 million, then someone please hand me a script filled with as much political correctness as possible. Of course, fans had a field day on social media. Hash too woke for Rocky became a trending topic, with many sharing memes of Stallone looking bewildered by modern trends like plant-based diets and electric scooters. Stallone's decision to turn down half a billion dollars raises broader questions about the role of art and entertainment in society. Should movies merely entertain, or should they also educate and raise awareness? And if they do the latter, how can they do it without alienating audiences? While it remains to be seen if Sylvester Stallone's stand against wokeness will impact his career, one thing is clear. In the ever-evolving world of Hollywood, it's essential to keep up with the times, even if it means turning down a hefty paycheck. As for Disney, they're reportedly in talks with another action star who's more in tune with their vision. Now, obviously, this information is coming from satirical publications, but it doesn't change how most of the American audience feels about the situation and wokeness in general. With that being said, though, Sylvester appears to have been feeling a bit overwhelmed by the direction that Hollywood has taken in general. In a chat with Entertainment Tonight Canada during the world premiere of his biographical documentary Sly, Sylvester Stallone humorously dubbed himself the last of the dinosaurs, celebrating his enduring career in the entertainment industry. The iconic Rocky star was referring to being one of the few 80s action heroes still at the forefront of movies, as evident in the upcoming fourth Expendables film. Additionally, Stallone is taking the lead in the Paramount Plus series, Tulsa King, a show that's been greenlit for a second season. Reflecting on his lengthy career, Stallone marveled at the career span, saying, you can't be prepared for this. 
The longevity of this career is mind-blowing. He emphasized the evolving landscape of society and the fast-paced nature of the film industry, recognizing the increasing value of career longevity. Continuing with a touch of nostalgia, Stallone remarked, I consider myself like the last of the dinosaurs, you know what I mean? And I'm very proud of that. He shared his appreciation for the journey spanning nearly five decades and underscored the importance of cherishing time with loved ones in the years to come. In his upcoming venture, Expend 4 Blees, Stallone is taking center stage alongside fellow 80s action star Dolph Lundgren. Noting the transformation of action cinema, he paid homage to his contemporaries like Bruce Willis and Arnold Schwarzenegger, acknowledging the era's unique contributions to the action genre. Reminiscing about the 80s, Stallone highlighted how the concept of the quintessential action hero was evolving. He spoke of a time when action was largely synonymous with car chases and intellect-driven narratives. He credited Schwarzenegger for reshaping action cinema, emphasizing the shift towards physicality and less reliance on dialogue to convey a character's story. Stallone concluded with admiration for Schwarzenegger, recognizing him as a superior action figure of that time, embodying the essence of an action hero through physique and strength, revolutionizing the industry with his unique approach to storytelling. That very industry, though, has now changed beyond belief. Recently, Kevin Sorbo didn't hold back when sharing his thoughts on Hollywood and modern masculinity. The 65-year-old actor, known for his role in Hercules, The Legendary Journeys, voiced his concerns about what he perceives as a misunderstanding of masculinity in the industry. In a recent essay for Fox News, he criticized what he referred to as woke Hollywood. Sorbo particularly focused his critique on prominent figures like Timothy Chalamet, 27, and Billy Porter, 54, highlighting the trend of androgynous fashion as what he called the masculinity crisis. In his essay, he also shared his perspective on the impact of feminism on modern masculinity, stating that giving in to base desires makes men vulnerable to the influence of feminist culture. He emphasized, it doesn't really matter what end of the masculinity spectrum you fall on. If you're a victim to your own base desires, the feminist culture has won. You're exactly the kind of wussy man they think they want you to be. Kevin Sorbo gained fame through iconic roles, including the titular character in Hercules' The Legendary Journeys from 1995 to 1999 and Captain Dylan Hunt in Andromeda from 2000 to 2005, not to mention his appearance in Xena, Warrior Princess. In recent years, Sorbo has become well known for his outspoken Christian beliefs and conservative opinions, which he claims have led to his marginalization within the entertainment industry. His latest op-ed tackling masculinity is sure to spark discussions, especially given his direct criticisms of popular Hollywood actors and fashion icons like Timothy Chalamet and Billy Porter. He expressed his concerns regarding the current portrayal and understanding of masculinity in today's society, citing the prominence of androgynous fashion and the diminished depiction of assertive, self-assured males. Sorbo also lamented the portrayal of men in Hollywood, painting a picture of the modern male figure as a mere caricature, often depicted as either brutish or ineffectual. This essay comes on the heels of Sorbo's previous statements about being sidelined by Hollywood due to his conservative and Christian beliefs, expressing his disappointment in the division within the country and its perpetuation through various media channels. Rachel Zegler has stirred up some controversy with her comments about the classic Disney film Snow White. Right. Clips from past interviews have emerged showcasing Ziegler expressing her reservations about the original 1937 animated princess movie. During a December interview with Entertainment Weekly, Ziegler revealed that she had watched the original film only once before revisiting it for her role in the new adaptation and hadn't particularly enjoyed it. I was scared of the original version. I think I watched it once and never picked it up again. I'm being so serious, Ziegler candidly shared during the interview, accompanied by Gal Gadot who portrays the evil queen. I watched it once, and then I went on the ride in Disney World, which was called Snow White's Scary Adventures, she added. Doesn't sound like something a little kid would like, was terrified of it. Never revisited Snow White again. I watched it for the first time in probably 16, 17 years when I was doing this film. In a separate interview with Variety last September, Zegler discussed bringing a modern edge to her character. She emphasized that the portrayal was evolving beyond the original 1937 version, stating, I just mean that it's no longer 1937. She and Gadot pointed out that in this adaptation, Snow White won't be dependent on a prince and is focused on her journey towards becoming a strong leader. 
Zegler also expressed her views on the character of the prince in the original film, labeling him as a stalker. She joked about the potential removal of some scenes featuring Prince Charming in the new adaptation, underlining the different approach taken in this retelling. However, these comments have sparked mixed reactions, with some TikTok users criticizing Zegler for what they perceive as a lack of appreciation for the original role. They argue that not every woman aims for leadership and wanting love or a different path doesn't diminish a person's worth or femininity. In a separate incident, actress Halle Berry called out rapper Drake for using her image without permission for his new single's cover art. The image was from an event where she was slimed at the Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards in 2012. Berry expressed her disappointment and emphasized the importance of respecting consent and giving women the respect they deserve. Understandably, this caused a lot of debate on the internet with the way it is. There were also the recent WGA and SAG-AFTRA strikes that really put into perspective the massive shifts happening in Hollywood. In the latest breaking news from Hollywood, the five-month-long strike by Hollywood writers has officially come to an end. Union leaders have given the green light to an agreement negotiated with the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers. The specifics of this new contract have been sent to union members for ratification. The Writers Guild of America WGA, made an announcement on Tuesday evening stating that writers can resume work after midnight local time while the ratification vote on the new three-year contract with Hollywood Studios takes place. This contract covers various aspects, such as writers' payment, terms regarding streaming shows, and the use of artificial intelligence. Negotiators from the Writers Guild of America WGA, and a coalition of studios, streaming services, and production companies reached a tentative agreement after engaging in marathon talks over five consecutive days. The WGA celebrated this three-year agreement, emphasizing its exceptional nature and the meaningful gains and protections it offers to writers across all sectors. With this development, late-night and daytime television shows are expected to make a swift return to the air. However, most TV and film productions are still on hold due to the ongoing actor strike, which has already disrupted production and release schedules for the upcoming months. This marks a significant turning point in Hollywood, concluding a dramatic chapter following one of the longest strikes in the industry's history. The strike brought productions to a standstill, causing ripples of impact throughout Los Angeles and beyond. In May, the WGA's 11,500 members voted overwhelmingly to authorize a strike for the first time in 15 years due to stalled negotiations with major studios. The writers argued for better pay and more stable work conditions in the era of online streaming. Additionally, the union demanded enhanced protections concerning studios' use of artificial intelligence. Writers spent months picketing outside major studios from Los Angeles to New York, including big names like Amazon, Netflix, Paramount, and Warner Bros. A few months into the writers' strike, the actors' union SAG-AFTRA also took similar action, resulting in a historic double strike, the first of its kind in over six decades. The writers' strike, lasting 146 days, was just five days short of becoming the longest in the Guild's history. A summary of the deal with the studios was made public on Tuesday, highlighting the concessions won by writers in crucial areas. These include residual payments for shows on streaming platforms, increased transparency regarding viewership numbers for platforms like Netflix, minimum writer requirements for pre-development, mini-rooms, and guidelines for the use of artificial intelligence. Members are set to vote on the deal between October 2nd and October 9th. The agreement with the WGA came after renewed talks following a months-long deadlock. Notably, top industry executives Bob Iger, Disney CEO, David Zaslav, Warner Bros. Discovery CEO, Ted Sarandos, Netflix co-CEO, and Donna Langley, NBC Universal Studio Group Chair, participated in this week's negotiations. While the end of the Hollywood actors' strike isn't on the immediate horizon, the writer's deal has sparked newfound optimism and energized those still picketing. This agreement could pave the way for resolving the actors' strike, addressing similar concerns. Marissa Cuevas, an actor known for TV series like Kung Fu and The Big Bang Theory, expressed hope, saying, Knowing that at least one of us has gotten a good deal gives a lot of hope that we will also get a good deal. The writers' picket lines had been temporarily halted, but they stood in solidarity with actors, many of whom joined the lines on Tuesday. Renowned figures like Mad Men creator Matthew Weiner and ER actor Noah Weil were present, advocating for a fair deal. We would never have had the leverage we had if SAG had not gone out, Weiner acknowledged, highlighting the importance of collective action. 
The actors have also authorized their leadership to potentially expand the strike to include the lucrative video game market, exerting additional pressure on Hollywood studios to negotiate fair terms, including wages, safety measures, and protections related to artificial intelligence. But not every change has been good. With the change in direction in Hollywood has come a difficult and perhaps alien change in environment for actors, and Sylvester Stallone is a very notable victim of that. Take Creed III, for example. Sylvester Stallone, known for his iconic portrayal of Rocky Balboa, starred alongside Michael B. Jordan in Creed and Creed II earning an Oscar nomination for supporting actor in the 2015 installment. However, he's conspicuously absent from Creed III. Although Rocky's name is mentioned in the script a few times, his whereabouts are left unexplained. This marks the first instance in the Rocky film franchise's 47-year history and nine films that a movie does not feature Rocky Balboa. Stallone's absence is due to a combination of his disagreement with the creative direction of Creed III and an ongoing clash with franchise producer Erwin Winkler. Creed III, written by Keenan Coogler and Zach Balin, with input from the original Creed director Ryan Coogler, takes a notably darker approach compared to the uplifting tone of traditional Rocky movies. Variety film critic Owen Gleiberman described it as more of a Cape Fear-inspired thriller than a typical Rocky film. Stallone expressed regret about the sequel's tone, stating, It was taken in a direction that is quite different than I would have taken it. He prefers a more sentimental approach and believes people have had enough darkness. On the other hand, Michael B. Jordan, who plays Adonis Creed, wanted Creed the Three to focus solely on Adonis and his growth. He explained that for Adonis to stand on his own, the movie needed to delve into his past and the transformative experiences that shaped him. The conflict between Stallone and Winkler over the Rocky franchise rights is a significant reason behind Stallone's absence in Creed III. Stallone sold the rights to Winkler when he was a struggling actor, not foreseeing the character's franchise potential. The rights clash has been ongoing for years, with Stallone expressing deep resentment. Despite Stallone's clash with Winkler, the Rocky franchise continues to evolve. MGM announced a spin-off centered on the Drago family from Rocky IV and Creed II, sparking controversy and further highlighting the rift. As long as Winkler holds the franchise rights, it remains uncertain whether Stallone will reprise his role as Rocky Balboa on the big screen. The friction between the two seems to be a significant hurdle in bringing Rocky back to the spotlight. Even recently, Stallone made some interesting statements that led to a lot of speculation about his position on modern Hollywood. The Hollywood veteran shared his thoughts on the evolution of Hollywood cinema, reflecting on the changes in filmmaking styles and genres from the 90s to today. He singled out his 1993 hit Cliffhanger, emphasizing how, even after three decades, the film remains relevant and engaging, a testament to its enduring appeal. Sylvester Stallone, clearly passionate about revisiting his successful project Cliffhanger, also remained realistic about how films age and resonate with modern audiences. He acknowledged that while Cliffhanger retains its appeal due to its technical brilliance and action sequences that still captivate audiences, the same might not hold true for other iconic films films when viewed through the lens of contemporary tastes. In his own words, Stallone noted, like, if you were to make The Godfather today, it wouldn't work, you couldn't, those actors don't exist, I mean, it's a different style. Now, cliffhanger like Demolition Man holds up, so I'm looking forward to it. And it's not just Stallone that feels this way. A lot of people think that Hollywood has changed for the worse these days. Like this person tweeted, No! The Hollywoke strike should have lasted forever, not last for a couple of months. Now Hollywood will once again make unwatchable, unbearable, far left wing, TDS tinged woke garbage that passes for entertainment once again. Another person tweeted, the hilarity of the writer's strike being the outcome Hollywood got scammed by the woke writers, and the payoff is one big screw job on the audience tickets, concessions, etc., all for them to get their piece of the pie. Hash sell Snyderverse to Netflix, hash sell ZSJL to Netflix. But there were also some people that celebrated the WGA successfully concluding the strike, saying, Our strike was necessary. Our strike was effective. Our strike is a victory. If anyone tries to tell you otherwise, it's because they never want to see us stand up for ourselves again. Don't believe it. We won this fight. We're the WGA, and when we fight, we win. Hash DJ Strong. That's all for the video, folks. Thanks for watching.